tutorial we are going to use the micro bit to create a reaction game and we're going to use the pins on the bottom of the micro bit um, as you can see here but it's a quick demo and what we're going to do is we're going to use a bit of cardboard to actually press down um, and obviously Tim Foyle to actually react then and show who the fastest person is and who the winner is. Now I am going to do another video after this which is going to show you how to add in um, variables so that you can basically have a start and an end time so you can see then who was the quickest to react. So the first thing we need to do is start by creating two variables. Um, one is called running and one is called false start. So I start this by clicking the variables and click on make variable. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to say running and click OK and you can see there now that's got set running to and I'm going to drag that in and drop it. And we're going to also create another one then to know when we've had a false start. So I'm just going to say that's false start. And click OK. So again, I've got here now set false start. I'm going to drag that in. So we need, when the program started, we need to set both of these to actually be false. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to click on my logic. And I'm going to go down to false, drag it in, drop there. And I'm going to drag another false marker in and done. That's the start now of my program underway. Now what we need to do is we need to start off by looking at what's in pin 1 and the idea with this is quite simple so we are going to grab a input and we're going to look at on pin 0 and pin 1 and pin 2 so I'm going to start with pin 0 so click on here drag drop and what we're going to do is a really, really quick countdown. Now, I could use a loop for this, but I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to use the standard numbers. So I'm going to put show number, show number, and then show number. And we're going to change this to 3, 2, and then 1. And then what I want to do is clear screen. So I'm going to go back to the basic, and I'm going to go to more, and we're going to click on clear screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pause the program and I want the pause to be absolutely random or as random as possible. So I'm going to click on pause, drag it in and then we're going to look at the math library here. Now when I click on the math library I'm going to be looking for the pick random option which is here and I'm going to click, hold down, drag that and drop it in to this option here. Now this pause is in milliseconds so obviously 1000 milliseconds is one second so I wanted to pause between one second and I think five seconds so I've got there now it's gonna show three two one when pin zero is pressed clear the screen it's gonna pause and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an if statement so I'm gonna use a little bit of logic and I'm gonna use the if true so it says if true, well what we need to say is if it's not the false start, so if we haven't pressed the button too early, we can then run the program. So if I go to my variables here and just drag in false start for now, but we also need to say if not false start. So if it's not a false start, now the way we do that is back on my logic here, I'll have a not operator which is here. I can put that in. So if not and then drag my false start, put that in here. So if it's not a false start, then we need to actually set the program to run. Now the way we do this is if I click on variables, this one here, set false start, click drag and drop, and we change this false start here to run in. So we need to say set false start, or sorry, set run in to, and we need to say true. So this now, we're just basically saying, if we haven't had a false start, then run in is now true. And what we need to do is clear the screen, so make sure everything is gone, just in case there is something there, which there shouldn't be, but just in case there is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a basic, and we're going to go with a show LED. So what this is going to do is show 3, 2, 1, clear screen, it's going to wait then for a random number of seconds between 1 and 5 and then provided nobody's pressed the button too early it's going to show a dot in the middle of the screen. 
Now that's all very well and good, but what do we do now for the players? Well, we need to add in two more of these purple pins. So if I click on input, drag this one in. Now you'll notice when I put this first one in, one of them may discolor. Don't panic. All you do is you change this input here to pin one, and now all is well. So what I want to say is if the program is running, then essentially wait for somebody to press it. So if I click on my if statement, it's my logic, and then I'm going to go to if. So if I need to say run in, so I change this here by going to variables. So if it's running, then, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in to some form of loop. So what I want to do is once the program is run, I want it just to continually show me who's won until I reset the program. So I'm going to use something called a while loop. So I'm going to say while true. We're going to go to basics, show LEDs. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw an arrow to this side. So this basically says is, if this person's the first one, point the arrow there. And then what we're going to say is, show string, T1 win. So what will happen is if the person who is playing for player one presses their button first, then it's going to say the arrow is going to show and then it's going to say player one wins. And it's going to loop that continuously. But what happens if there is a false start? Well, if I click the plus here, I'm going to put an else statement in and we need to set a variable. The false start is we need to say true. So we go back to my logic. And what we need to do is we need to show some form of either unhappy face or like an X. So I'm just going to go with an X really quickly now. So I'm going to draw an X on this side. Like so. So what will happen is this. When the program's going to be set to run, it's basically going to count down 3 to 1 clear screen, pick a random number between 1 and 5 and then as soon as this lights up the first person to press their button will win. Now we've done player 1, let's do player 2 so a cheat for this, if you right click on the top code block and go to duplicate this makes an entire copy and what we can do then very quickly is change this to on pin 1, so on pin 2 here and then instead of the arrow pointing that way, I need the arrow then to point the other way. And we need to say player 2 wins. And we also need then to change this so this arrow is not working. Now you can test this out quite easily by using the emulator here. But we're also going to build this and we're going to test it out using the uh, cardboard in a moment. So if I just recycle this. so. Once we start pin 1, so if I click on pin 1 here, hopefully, I've got to be very careful with my mouse here. So there we are, 3, 2, 1, it's weighted in now, random number, and there you are, you can see it's light. So if I now choose pin 1, it's now showing me player 1 as 1, which is great. Now, if I, because this is in a while loop, if I were to click on 2, you can see it does nothing, which is pretty nice. Apart from, obviously, once it's looped, um, and then once that loop has obviously started, because I've pressed it so many times, um, it will then say player 2 has 1. But obviously, you would know when you're playing the game. Now, the way we could stop that is we could put this into a function. Um, if we wanted to, but obviously I'm not going to do that for this level of game. Now when we're ready, we can call this something like Reaction Game. And then we can save it, and then we can download it onto the micro bit. So here's the micro bit actually in the um, cardboard holder. I know it looks a little bit messy with the um, wires, but that's as neat as I could get it for now. The micro bit now has been programmed, so if I did touch the player silver foil at the bottom here and the start button 
it'll now start counting down as you can see three two one and as soon as this lights up we can then press either one of the play one or play two so if i'm playing on my own obviously i can press that and it's then said player one wins which is nice now just to test it and show you if i reset this and we'll start it again three two one this time I'm going to go with the other option. So if I press that one, it's now obviously showing me that player two has won. So that's how you create a basic reaction game with two players using the micro bit.